from the... Yeah, I was going to the gym with my dad. Uh, my dad used to run the boxing. And I used to go up from six, seven, eight years of age to watch the lads boxing. And then once I became old enough, I joined the floddy. Uh, started the boxing, but then went across into judo and then threw into the football team. I threw till I was 18. It's strange because I know Denise has said a number of on occasions, uh, it's in your blood, which basically it is. Uh, talk to lads now that I see who used to be in the team when I was 18 years of age and they're all asking about the floddy. You know, they said it'd be great to have it back again. It's just nothing like it around, you know. It was, it was the characters that used to go in the place. Uh, from when I say I was six, seven, eight years of age going in, it was the noise of the place. And had a certain smell about it. And there was so much going on in all the different areas of the club, you know. Well, back then, um, you'd go in and Mr. Brown was still there. He was there when my dad was there. He was on the door. He had a big tropical fish tank on the counter. You had to pay your subs to get in. And then you could go off to your right. Uh, down there was the table tennis, uh, snack bar. Left hand side was downstairs, Jimmy. You could hear the, the lads playing football first, the shouting, the ball getting kicked against the wall. You know, and then you could look in, see the lads playing. Went up the main staircase, you could start to hear the boxing, uh, the punch bags going, my dad's voice shouting, you know, shouting at the lads and, you know, encouraging. Then you could hear the main hall, which had gymnastics, judo, going on there. It's just the different noises, different parts of the building, you know. And there was a section at the back, which was like the quieter part down the basement. You had a fishing club. I uh, used to do joinery as well down there. Sure. It's all the lads that used to go, the friendship. Uh, you knew you had somewhere to go overnight. You know, even you, you talk to the older lads, like my dad. You know, he's in his 70s, and the lads my age, a little bit younger, they used to go. And they all think the same about the flurry. You know, it's just something that's badly missed in the area. Uh, I've done a couple of clean-outs myself in the main hall upstairs about four years ago, when the roof collapsed. We, had, we moved, it was approximately 22 skips full of rubbish in buckets basically off the main hall floor, stop it collapsing. And it was just, I don't know, you could still hear the noises as you walked in, uh, the flurry, the way it used to be, you could still imagine things going on there, you know, but then you get upstairs to the main hall and look up and there's a big open space, the roof's gone, burnt, you know. And we found a clay pipe actually set in the brickwork from the lads who built it in the late 1800s. And there was a message inside, but unfortunately, as we tried to take it out, it just crumbled away. So one of the old bricklayers had this white pipe, obviously put a little bit of a time capsule in there, which is something we're going to hopefully do uh, before the flurry opens again. Going back four or five years ago, so we'd done the clean out, there was a lot of rats in the basement, and I had to tie in with the council and go down, because they were all in the basement. And I had a torch, which had a battery. It was a chargeable one. And I was going through one side of the, the basement, and I thought I'd picked the correct torch up and I hadn't. It was the wrong one. And it started to fade. And it's pitch black down there. So I was trying to get out and I fell over something. And next time I went down, I went to see what it was. And there's this big projector. And it was about nearly foot, three foot high. Yeah. And it was just left there. I don't know how it survived. The fire and everything, but it was perfect. Um, we've put a lot of work into planning it. Uh, we've also asked the community what they'd like um, to be in the flurry. Um, and it's just seeing the kids in there again, you know, as well as other age groups. You know, the way, I'd, it'll never go back to the way it was with myself because it was just boys at the time, but it needs to be for the community now. But that sort of spirit that it brings into the community. But it's, uh, we've, had, yeah, we've had positive feedback, you know. Um, we have regular meetings with the public uh, up in talk to the town hall, and it's, uh, it's very well attended. And you do get disheartened, you know, at times. But you just got to keep on going. It's like the Big Dipper, basically. You think you're getting there and then down again. You know, knockbacks, you know, different funding seizures. But uh, it's come together in the end. But it has been hard work. The flurry being in your blood, basically. You know, it's uh, everyone pulling together. Um, one major inspiration is Denise Devine, basically. You know, without, without Denise, you know, I don't think we'd have made it. Seeing the drawings that, that have been done and the plans and what we've got lined up for the flurry, um, besides the, the community spirit that I think will be there, um, it's going to be unbelievable.